Hello everybody, today we're going to go into prepping our 45 Auto Brass for reloading. I have a whole container, I have about a thousand rounds to reload. So I'm going to take you step by step on doing this. Right now this press is set up for 45 ACP. So what we're going to do is we got to take the plate off this Pro 4000. This is what I'm using as a Pro 4000 for reloading. I do my entire job with this alone. It's a lower end progressive reloader. I have no complaints. It works good for me. I can do about a thousand rounds in a day with this reloader. There are much better ones out like Dylan, but I have all the plates for this for what I need. So this is pretty substantial for me. I manually reload my, pri my powder because my powder and doing a charge just right is very critical. So I like to make sure my charge is perfect. So first things first, we got to remove all of our dies off of our press to make sure we get it all prepped and ready. So we get these all off. Now I have to go through and pull this out. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to have to take our Allen wrench. It comes with the press. We got to pull this up, and then I got to pull this off right here. Make sure this comes off nice and easy. There we go. So that's taken off. So I can pull this all the way up. I have to put this inside here. There we go. Yep. So we got to come down. So it has to bind right there. Now you go through. And you can start back in this thing out. There we go. There. Now we have it coming out. So eventually, once we get this all done, come all the way up. And you can just go all the way through. Now that's all done. Set that right there. Pull that up. We'll pull the plate off. And now we have the plate off for a 45 ACP. Now we got to go and get our one for our 45. This is plate number 11 for our 45 Colt. They should go right in there real easy with no problem. This is 45 ACP. So if you try to do it in 45 ACP, it won't fit. It'll get stuck. So you do not want to force these. So we'll put our plate away. We'll put our other one in. Start going in. There we go. So we're going to set that right there. There. Now we're going to go through. We're going to tighten that in the rest of the way. And what I do is I like to just Give it just a little bit of a tightness without going, you don't want to crank it. Just a little bit, there we go. You don't want to over tighten it because you could actually break things. So that's the last thing you want to do with the press. Now, I'm going to take this little rod right here. I'm going to put this straight in. So that rod's going to go right in. And then we're going to take our last piece right here, our die, and Generally, for right now, all I'm doing is I'm going to be deep priming. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either deep prime everything first, or you can put it and you can um, sonic clean it, or you can tumble it first, then take the primers out. I like to do it this way because I can get the primers out, and then when I get the primers out, then I can go through and i can have primer po pockets clean out a lot easier so that way it's a lot easier for me to go through the next process so we're going to get this thing set up for the next step so we're going to go through we're going to make sure our dies fit in there good so i'm going to put the die in and i actually have these all preset so they're all ready to go so there's no reason to do anything else so they just clip right in there so now that everything's all preset, so this die here is holding this 
plate from coming out because if this plate's not in here, this will start coming right out. So I want some, something has to be here. This is like a powder charge die, but I'm not using the powder charge die. I'm just doing one single motion here. That's all I'm doing. So the first thing's first. I'm going to go through. You're going to bring it up. You're going to deprime. You're going to take the primer out. There we go. Now, if you look right here, we just removed the primer out of the primer pocket. Now, I have about a thousand more to go. So I'm going to show you one more time. So the way this, there's two ways you can do this. You have it come all the way up. You drop it straight in there. And then what you do, you go in, have it go in like that. Have it come up. And as it's coming up, you drop another one in. You go in and do it again. And that's how you would go through and deprime everything with this particular press. And now I have a thousand to do, so I'm going to go through and get all these done. And then we're going to go to the next step on the sonic cleaning. All right, so now we're finishing up our reloading. We still have a lot more to do, but I'm going to be able to get this on the sonic cleaner while I'm finishing up the reloading. So when I'm working with a progressive reloader, I put like three or four in my hands. I drop it in. Now right here, in this little piece right here, that's my little indicator. And what that does is that allows it to drop in. Well, if there's a primer that doesn't come out all the way, I can pop it the rest of the way. And what I do is I just let it feed around, let it feed around, and then I can just take these off as they go. And what this does is this also has a stop on it. So that way when it goes through, you just poke it right in that hole right there. So when it finishes up, it goes through, and it's supposed to fall right in. Where sometimes it doesn't do that. There it goes. So that fell right through. So now we're going to finish these all up. So I'll put that in right there. There we go. Here, get that one. That one, we're almost done here. We just have a few more left to do. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna go over and we're gonna put these through the sonic cleaner. So there's two different ways you can do this when it comes to sonic cleaning or when you're cleaning your brass or polishing your brass. One way is a tumbler. Tumbler works really well, but the problem is they're very loud and they're very noisy and some if you have neighbors around you they probably wouldn't like hearing a tumbler going for six seven hours a day and it can get, get very annoying even the uh, dust from the tumbler can get very loud i mean very hard to deal with and you can actually have a lot of breathing problems from the dust so what i do is i like to use a sonic cleaner instead so that way, when you're sonic cleaning, I can go through and run it for four minutes, change the water out, change the solution, and then go to the next step. So I go through about four or five sessions of the sonic cleaning. So we're going to go over and we're going to start sonic cleaning. So we're going to take our brass off that we have right here, and we're going to take our remaining brass that we have with all the primer pockets all uh, deprimed. And we're going to put this inside of our sonic cleaner. And I save my peanut jars. These are awesome to use. I try to get as many as I can because these are awesome for storing ammo and shell casings. So I like these a lot. So I'm going to take this over to my sonic cleaner and I'm going to start sonic cleaning my brass. All right. So now we just put our water in. So we're going to take our shell casings and we're going to put them inside the water. I try to spread them out a little bit. And I generally don't like filling it all the way up. I just like to put some in. And I spread them out so that way it has a good clean to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to add a little bit of soap, dish soap to it. You could use Dawn. Any dish soap would work. Probably about a teaspoon of dish soap. And then I'm going to use Lemon Shine. Just these two alone. So probably you want to do like a teaspoon of lemon shine. And then we're just going to go through. 
We're gonna turn it all the way up to the highest setting. We turn it on, we're gonna turn it on hot. Now, it's gonna go through the sonic cleaning process and I'm gonna go put the lid on and we're gonna get it sonic cleaning. We're gonna do this four times. After the fourth time, we're gonna go through and we're gonna put this stuff on and this is gonna polish up the brass up. So this does this one more process to it when it's all done. All you need is just these soaps and this. You don't need to do anything extra, nothing else special. I mean, this is all I use. I haven't used anything else. It does the job, it cleans up everything. And then you'll probably need a strainer. I mean, that's all it, just, just a basic strainer. Any strainer will work. So you can go to the dollar store, get what you need to get, and you're pretty much set. So we're gonna let this do its thing, and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna check it, and then we're gonna keep doing this until they're all cleaned up. Okay, so as you can tell, this is our brass right here. We could start just with the way this is, but we're gonna do the additional cleaning. So we're gonna add this stuff here to help give a little bit more cleaning, polishing, make it look a little nicer. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour this right in front of here. There we go. So this stuff here, it has the measurements on here. It does not take much. It takes about a teaspoon. So I just go put it out that much. It's about how much I use. Stir it around a little bit. There you go. Put that back on. It does not take much at all. In fact, I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. The water is gonna have a little bit of like a green look to it. And this is gonna lubricate not just lubricate, but it's going to shine up my brass. It's going to make it look nice and shiny when it's done so it's not such a uh, chalky look to it. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And there we go. So we're going to put the lid on. And this is going to go for about three cycles. And then once it goes through, each cycle is about four minutes and 80 seconds. So we just did five cycles of the lemon shine and the dish soap. And I actually had to do it twice, so I had to dump it out and redo it again. So this is an okay sonic cleaner. I got this at Harbor Freight. I got it on sale for about 50 bucks. So they're not the best, but it does the job. So we're gonna let it do its thing, and then we're gonna come back in a little while, and we're gonna turn it back on. And we got about 15 minutes of doing this. All right, now that we just got done sonic cleaning our brass, we're gonna go through and inspect our brass, make sure it's eligible. I'd like to do one last cleanup and put it on top of the towel. If you notice how clean that is, nice and clean, some areas are dirty, so if you look inside there, it's a little bit grimy. Let's throw it back to the side here. Get re-cleaned. So that one there is acceptable. So that's nice and clean on the inside. So that's a doable one. So we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through and check all these real fast. Make sure all the water is out of them. And we're going to put it on the towel. What the towel is going to do is we're going to do a rough drying on it with the towel. And that's going to allow me to go through and take the brass and I go through and dry it up as best I can. And then I put the brass in the oven. And once it goes in the oven, it should be ready to go for the next step, which is what we're going to do is we're going to start beveling the inside and outside. And that's so that way it will crimp properly and the bullet will go in properly. So it's very important to make sure you have it properly beveled for the crimping. The one thing that we are not going to do is trimming. And the reason is, is it's not really necessary to trim for like 9mm, 38 special, uh, 45 Colt, uh, 45 Auto. I mean, it's just not really necessary to trim for this particular type of brass. We are not trying to shoot for perfect 10 point accuracy. We're only trying to hit a metal plate. That's the primary goal. So, and I'm not even shooting that far. 
So I'm actually going to be loading these with what's called cowboy loads. And it's where I actually make it a little bit on the colder side instead of on the medium side because I just need to reach out and touch my target. I don't need to drill the target. I don't need to do that. In fact, it could actually be dangerous if you go too hot because if I go too hot, you could actually have strap metal come back and hit people in the face. And I've actually had it come back and slice me across my face. And that's why we wear safety protection. But that's a whole other story. But this does make it a little bit safer. There are other bullets you can use, fiber after bullets, which will turn to dust once they hit the targets. But they're far more expensive. But generally, we shoot lead. So the next step we're going to do is you're going to take the brass. You're going to take it just like this. And you're going to shake it around, back and forth, back and forth. You want to get as dry as much of the water out of it as possible. Just massage it. So that way when you go to put it on the cookie sheet, you can put it in the oven and it'll be ready for the next process. So we can go through and start setting up the table and do what we got to do next. Okay, looks like we lost one. So we're going to go ahead and throw that back in there. And we're just going to go through and do this. And all this is just getting as much of the water out as possible. So that way, when it goes into the oven, the oven can do its thing. So there we go. It's a lot drier. So now when the oven goes and does its thing, it's going to completely dry it out. So we have no water spots. So we're going to go set the oven up. And then we're going to go to the next step. All right. So I put the oven on the lowest setting. And I'm going to hit start. So it's preheating. You can go ahead and put this in while it's preheating. And I'm going to set it all up so our brass is all dry. It's ready to go. I just take the towel just like this. You don't want to drop it in because you can bend it up. You want to do as little drop in the top of it. You want to do it as easy as you can. Because you don't want, you want as little defective brass as possible. So we're going to go through. Spread our brass out. I like to lay it flat. I don't like really setting up. This is the other reason why I like the private pockets cleared out for this. Because I want to be able to have holes on both ends. So that way it can do this process. Now I just stick it in the oven. And you want to wait about five minutes. You want to check it. See if they're wet. If not, you put it in for another five minutes. You may want to just do a couple minutes. It's kind of something you have to use your own judgment. A good way to tell if you start seeing a little coloring on the, the brass, get it out immediately. It's too hot. Because you don't want to open this up and find a big puddle of brass in there. Because then you have useless ammunition. What you want to do is you want to have your shell cases just dry so it doesn't have water spots. So we're going to give it five minutes. We're going to come back and check it. All right, so it's been five minutes. We're going to check our brass. A lot of times what you want to do, the only thing we're doing is just making sure there's no water spots in it. That's it. So we're just going to put them for a little bit longer. Then we're going to pull it back out. And then it should be good to go. All right, now I'm back. I gave it about two minutes. So we're going to go ahead and pull it out. Look at it. we to be very careful because it is hot. The grass is hot. So there we go. That's nice and ready to go. We go through it. It is really hot. I'm touching it and see how it's a little bit discolored. You don't want it to get any more than that. So if you look at it real closely, you'll see there's a little bit of color on the brass. You don't want you know, too too much color. So if I look at this, and that is really hot. It's like the water is completely out of it. All right. So now the next step is we're going to let this cool. We're going to put it cool. We're going to go through. And I gotta bevel the brass. So we're gonna go through and let it cool off. Give it about five minutes to cool. And then we're gonna go bevel the brass. Alright, so the next step what we're gonna do is we gotta go through and we gotta prep our brass for being reloaded. And after this, then we have to go through and we have to prime all of our brass. I like to do everything one at a time. That way I could catch all the little mistakes because I have a press that is not as high quality as I'd like. 
but it does the job. I mean, you can't go wrong with this press. I love the press. I've been using it. I probably loaded 10,000 rounds through it. But I like to make sure, double check, make sure everything is perfect. So you could start off with one of these. I bought this tool for about 30 bucks and this thing is murder to use. And the reason why, you should go through and I can go through it, I can bevel one in. Okay, then we have one in beveled, then we have to do the inside. And this works really well, it does the job. And then you have to take it all apart and you gotta do the prior pocket. Now, this machine I paid about 100 bucks for, it's about 110. Buy it on Amazon, you can't go wrong. And you literally turn it on and go. So the first things first, we'll turn it on. We'll do a prior pocket. There we go, so as you can tell, it's starting to get clean. Just gonna go a little bit more. And a little bit more. I like to make sure my prior pockets are perfect. So that way you can get a good strike on it. Now, you wanna bevel the inside. So we have a good bevel on the inside. Then we're gonna bevel the outside. There we go, we have the outside beveled. Now we're gonna do a clean. There we go, that is ready to go. So it's nice and good way to tell is if you look at it, you see it's nice and shiny on the inside and outside. That is ready to go. So I'll do another one. So first things first, you can look at the prior pocket, see how dirty it is. You look at this prior pocket, see how clean it is. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna do this in. There we go, just a little bit more. So this will allow me to see the prop primer end properly, so it's not overseated or underseated. It's, it's very good to make sure you have it flush and flat, because if it's not seated, when I was going cowboy action shooting one time, when I first started learning how to reload, I didn't check it. I didn't see the primer end all the way, and when I went to go for Pete, I had a primer protrusion, and then it got stuck against the firing pin of the revolver and it just messed up the whole thing. I actually had to set my gun down and I had a lot of misfires and it was just a learning experience. So that was something that I learned what not to do. One point I like to make about reloading is this is not rocket science. It's not that hard to learn, not that hard to do, but you want to treat it like it's rocket science very important to follow every step step by step by step now this is a good example of a bullet that's properly seated and when I mean, the primer is seated this is where it's crimped on there properly well if you do not bevel this like you're doing with these here this is what's going to happen and sometimes when you're reloading you may miss one you may forget one it happens and this is what happens Will it still shoot? Yes, but you won't get your proper pressures that you need to have. So if you look right there, you'll notice that my fingernail is hitting it. And that's not good. Where this one here, if you look at this, it's, nice, it's not hitting it as much. So you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure it's not like this. So you want to make sure it's seated. Plus, your bullets will come right out and you don't want that to happen. So I have some that I have to actually pull the bullets because when I first started reloading, I made some mistakes. I did, I did get my primer charges right, which was good. I mean, primer charge is one that everybody worries about, but you gotta make sure you're doing everything proper and doing everything right. So this is where I bought this machine. This is gonna allow me to get a good rotation, a good turn. This is something that, I mean, I bought, I was on a budget, and I was starting out, I didn't have a huge amount of money to put into this. So I had to gradually build up all my equipment and build up everything so that way I can make my life a lot easier in doing this. Because yeah, you can do 100 rounds with this pretty easy, get through it. But when you have to do 1,000 to 2,000 rounds in a night, your wrist is gonna be murder when you're done. It's gonna be miserable. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna get all these done, and we have a whole bunch more we got also do. 
And then we're gonna go to the next step where we're gonna go through and we're gonna start priming all of these and have them all primed and ready to go. All right, we're now on our last step for prepping our brass for reloading. So all you need is one shot case lube, it comes about 10 bucks a can. You can make your own lube, but I just think it's just easy just to go and buy the lubrication. And that way I can just go and do it. But all I do, I just do even sprays. And then, then I take some paper towel. Take your paper towel and just put it right over, just like this, and just go back and forth. Let that case lube work its way in. Then you're going to go over and you're going to do it again. And we're going to do it again. So you're going to do this about two or three times. I try not to touch it if I can help it. Um, generally, it's, it's better to have some rubber gloves on when you're doing this, but you don't have to. It's just by choice. Okay, let me do it one more time. And this is going to make the reloading process a lot easier. It's going to make it to where things are going to run good. It's going to run good in the press. Okay, so now it's all lubricated. Now we're going to go through. Yeah, what I like to do is I like to just gradually get this together and try to get it all bunched as one. And then what I prefer to do is go and pick it up from the bottom and then just pour it right inside this I would not handle it with my fingers. There we go. This is all lubricated and ready to go. This isn't the only way. There's other ways of doing this. It's just my preference of how I do it. It works for me. It's been very successful. And I'm probably going to keep doing it this way. So I'm going to use this for the next batch. So I'm going to put that right inside there. So we can get this all filled up. And now we're going to start the next batch. And get this brass finished up. I got about a thousand rounds to do. So this is all prepped and ready to go for reloading. Now I can go through and start priming, start getting my powder measurements, start getting everything together, and we would have ourselves a good cartridge.